All right, everybody, welcome back to a whole new, you know, not really season, I don't know, this is really just a one-off this time, but we are going to announce the next discography we will be diving into, so stay tuned for that at the end of this video. But we're just coming off fresh off the big Black Sabbath ranking video, so this one, it being a one-off, you know, we're just going to be one and done, plow right through it, and then get going to the next. And I said, I'd, you know, kind of do something a little bit different. I like to shake things up a little bit on here with, um, you know, we've reviewed stuff like with like prog stuff like GTR, some synth pop like Mr. Mister, obviously a ton of heavy metal, uh, you know, no surprise there. But we're also we're gonna do a pop record here tonight, an '80s pop record. Um, of course, we're talking about 1986. David and David, welcome to Boomtown. Or I, or I'm sorry, that's the name of the song on here, just Boomtown, <laughs> but, um, so we've got these two guys here, David Bearwald, David Ricketts, and weirdly enough, it's produced by David Sigerson, so it's kind of strange, but, um, there's David Ricketts again, David Bearwald, none of these guys, you know, ever really did anything after this, um, except David Bearwald did release a solo album in the, I think, 1990. Then, and I do have a copy of it, so, you know, I may review that at some point in the future. Uh, and then they both went on to do, like, they do, They went on to produce some albums for some, you know, notable artists and such like that, if you kind of look into it. But there's not a lot of info out there about these guys, which is a damn shame. Um, and, you know, the there's such a cool, cool vibe on here. And unlike a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff that was going on at this time with the pop scene was a more fun party in time. This album really kind of talks about some darker stuff, um, inner city life, you know, and, and stuff like that. And it also, the production, it is one of my, oh man, just one of the best produced albums ever, in my opinion, like as far as the clean, uh, the cleanliness of the production and just, man, it just has the synth tones in it are just so powerful and, and ambient in a way. So just really, really cool. Um, but we'll just we'll just jump right on into it with the opening track, Welcome to Boom to the Boomtown. And this was like really their only like hit, if you even want to call it that. It was kind of like, you know, what people would call a one hit wonder, because that's really all people heard of from these guys on the radio. So they just listened to that one, didn't really, you know, a lot of people didn't really delve into it after that. And that and such a cool song, again, with just the the synth thing going on with it right off the bat in the beginning. And um Really cool groove going on, some some drums that pack a punch, and uh, just some darker themed lyrics, you know, took a year off college, ne uh, and he never went back, you know, just kind of dealing dope out at Denny's, you know, had, reserves a table in the back, just some dark inner city life kind of struggles that, you know, that these guys were talking about, so, you know, and I, I don't know if maybe that kind of shied people away from this album or what, but them talking about some more serious matters and stuff like that uh, throughout the record. But, I mean, this this song is just badass. One of the best ones off here. Um, really, really cool. Really, really cool song. Really, really hooky chorus. Um, but, yeah, then we move on to Swallow by the Cracks, which is, I'd say that's probably one of my least favorites off here, but it's still, you know, it, it's really cool. Kind of has a different vibe to it. Um, a much more upbeat. Uh, vibe to it, but yet it's still just talking about, you know, some kind of darker stuff, and David Barrowald, um, he's the vocalist on here, this guy um, right here, I mean, Ricketts does do some, like, background vocals and stuff, and these guys' harmonies are great together, which we'll talk about as we get going in it, but David Barrowald kind of has, like, a different voice uh, for, like, not a country voice, but, like, he's got, like, a, almost, it sounds like a southern draw to it, just a little bit there that kind of, you know, in, in a really cool way, um, and really kind of a deeper voice, but it fits this music really, really well. But yeah, Swallowed by the Cracks is a cool one, kind of more of an upbeat one with a cool little uh, keyboard line in it. Then we go to uh, Ain't So Easy that has some really, really freaking good, um, some really, really good uh, keyboard in it, you know, like, and synth in it going on. And I just, I, I love, love, love the chorus and the harmonies. We start to see a little bit of these harmonies here with these guys, like in the in the chorus, after the first, like, lines there in the chorus, and then, you know, I swear that I could make it happen when they say that, they're, like, you know, um, harmonizing together really, really beautifully, um, 
and just another really, really solid track. I love the kind of vibe on this one. In between each verse, you get a really cool bass uh, groove going on with the synth on it. Um, and the in speaking of which, David Ricketts here, he plays, um, you know, the bass, guitar, and uh, and I, I can't remember if he does the synth work or not. He very well might. And, I, and I'm not sure exactly who does the drums. It may even be Bearwall doing a little bit of that. I, I know, for the most part, if not all uh, of the instruments and such on here, it's these guys. Um, I may be mistaken on that, maybe for an instrument or two, but I know the majority of what's going on is these guys. But Ain't So Easy, just a really, really solid track. Then we go to probably my favorite off here, Being Alone Together. Such a moody, moody track with a cool guitar, um, kind of, you know, kind of like a, it's almost reggae sounding in a way, which is, uh, well, during the chorus, um, and, and it sounds weird because this is not a reggae song in the slightest, but the, the way the rhythm kind of goes for it, like, just the, if, if you kind of think of that stereotypical kind of reggae, like the dan dan nan -na, like kind of rhythm to it, that's kind of what's going on in the chorus here, but with just such a clean and crisp um, guitar tone to it, and the same kind of things going on in the verses, and just the deep, kind of chill out, kind of cool sounding voice from David Bearwald, you know, going on here. Um, it just really, really cool sound and it just a powerful chorus. And I love, love, love the during the chorus whenever they do, you know, he'll say, be alone together. And then there'll be the little piano thing going on. Then when you get to the next chorus, it's, um, you'll hear that piano thing. But then David Ricketts kicks in with that guitar and kind of, you know, throws in little fills there and such, and a really, really cool guitar solo um, at the end of this. And again, just such a well-produced song, um, just like everything else here in the album. So Being Alone Together has just got a, such a cool vibe to it, and powerful song with some really cool lyrics. One of my favorite uh, songs off here, if not my favorite. Then we hop on to side two, which this one might be taking the cake for the favorite, A Rock for the Forgotten. I mean, this is where the, the harmonies go i mean just beautifully right here you get to hear them in their prime um the harmonies like in its best purest form and during the chorus here whenever you know david barrow will do his little thing and then when i both say a rock for the forgotten you hear um david Bearwald and rick it's just their voices they're just perfect parallels uh to each other and it's the same with like the little ending of the chorus there and i love the verses up in here this is just such a freaking cool song, and I love, love, love the lyrics, and I, the synth, and again, I'm kind of talking a lot about the same stuff here, just like with the synth and the guitar and all these just amazing production, because that's just really what's going on here, you know, all throughout, but each song has its own identity, and a rock, because a rock for the forgotten has got just this, um, it's a little bit fast paced, but just such a solid, um, solid groove to it. And then it gets really slow down the break down there, and you get to hear that just beautiful synth and a little bit of a bluesy feel um, from Ricketts. And you hear a lot of like that, a lot of bluesy stuff going on in here. Not really, I mean, maybe there may be one blue, kind of blues song off here, but we'll get to that. Then we go with River's Gonna Rise, and this might be the darkest one off here. Uh, one, or, well, mm, I don't know about that, but I mean, it's one of the darker ones off here with just kind of like, the moodiness of it. Not really lyrically, I don't think. Um, I mean, hell, Welcome to the Boomtown's pretty dark <laughs> lyrically. But I just, you get really, really good um, synth sound in here. And just the low voice again from Bearwald thrives with the lower synth tones going on. And man, it just, it's like it echoes. And then he just belts out during these pre choruses and then even goes even further in the choruses. When Ricketts kicks in with a guitar and just tears the stuff up. One of my favorites off here. So, I mean, as you can see here, there's really not a bad song on here going so far. Um, then we hop into just this one. Such a cool sounding one. Swimming in the Ocean with just such a cool little riff here. And then the bass kicks in to kind of groove right along. Playing in the back of the beat there. Um, I mean, man. Just... And I love the the vocals from this, too. Uh, Bearwald hits a little bit of a higher tone. I mean, he belts out some really powerful notes in here, but, like, this one, he's even, like, hitting higher, maybe going a little bit up uh, an octave on there vocally. 
and and there's kind of a distortion on the voice during like the kind of pre-chorus then you get to the chorus and it's just that harmony it just that that this time they incorporate the synths with their vocal harmonies that just flow and make like this perfect line man beautiful beautiful song then we hop into this one might be the darkest off here I'm talking, they're like, they're getting the keyboard, piano, whatever they're doing and playing at the very low end, all the way down here, you know, just dark, dark stuff. And it just, it sounds like they're slamming them dark keys. This one is real, real bluesy because this is just kind of going on with that dark um, piano plan, keyboard plan. And then, you know, you'll hear a little bit of vocal work and then back to it. I mean, man, and then the drums start kicking in in the chorus and start just banging the hell out of the out of the drums while Ricketts is kind of, you know, doing a little bit of background vocals. So that that's really a bluesy, dark bluesy track um, on here that stands out big time. And if you want to hear like a piano slash keyboard, again, I, I don't know if they're using the piano feature on the keyboard here or not, um, or if they're just using the piano, but they're like hitting the lowest end possible, it sounds like, the deepest notes they can go, and they just make it freaking work because, it, it, you know, it just... It makes just such a dark toned song. Then we end it with Heroes, which this one might is one of my least favorites off here too, but it's a cool ending. This one does have almost like a country, uh, maybe a western kind of feel to it a little bit with like the acoustic guitar and Ricketts doing some sliding on it. Um, and just the vocals and the chorus sounds like a, like a, you know, a, a kind of a deep south uh, country song, you know, a little bit. But it's not really a country song because it's got... That, that's the thing with these guys. They just incorporate all these different aspects from different genres on each of these songs to make just a, a pure pop record. And, you know, with all the... They use it, it seem, seemingly just every instrument at their disposal. You know, they just went at it, made a piece of art that is one of my favorite pop albums of all time right here. And, you know, that's why, you know, it's a shame whenever... Usually... Usually people don't know who these guys are, period. Um, even people I know who like grew up in the 80s and such. But then, let's say they do maybe know them. Then they just know the one song, Welcome to the Boomtown, which is a great song in its own right. But I'm like, man, you got to dig deeper into some of these tracks because they're just so freaking good and underrated. And it's a damn shame we didn't get a second album with them. There apparently was some talk about it at one point. And they just never really followed through or whatever. I think they both had their own things going on. Um, I think... I'm trying to remember the name of David Brickett's wife, but if you look it up, um, or girlfriend at the time, she had a, a pretty decent solo career, a very unique voice. I, I forget her name off the top of my head, but you can look up, look it up, look into it, and she's got kind of a cool little um, discography and you know solo run. And David Ricketts helped produce those albums for her, and uh, even played a little bit on them. And like I said, Bearwald's got his own solo album that um, Bearwald here does uh, came out in like what 1990, and that one. That one does have a little bit more, he leans more into, at, at, at times, um, a little bit of that, like, almost country-sounding vo uh, vocal style. Like, you know, because that, that's kind of what, like I said at the beginning, this is kind of what his voice is, in a way. But, like, he uses it in such a way on some of these tracks that, like, you just, like, on, like, Being Alone Together and A Rock for the Forgotten, to where it's like, it, those songs are, even though he's got that kind of voice... They're not even country sounding in the slightest. In fact, I'm not the biggest fan of country music. Um, I know there's good stuff in every genre or whatever, but that's probably that's one of my least favorite genres. One I very, very rarely visit. But his voice, you know, it just don't matter. I mean, it's just so damn good. And the harmonies, like I said, that's one of the key factors. So if you guys haven't ever heard of these, um, heard this album or of these guys, period, or even the you know the big hit off here. Um, I highly, highly, highly suggest this if you're like a synth pop fan, you know, and love like Duran Duran, maybe, and you know, like The Fix, that Mr. Mister, that sort of thing, because that's kind of what they're in the vein of, but at the same time, they're totally different because of each song having its own true identity on this album, and that's what makes this such a well-rounded pop album, is the identity, the individuality of each of these tracks. But yeah, guys, um, really fun looking into this. I love doing these little one-offs, you know, because they're fun to look at albums that, you know, maybe a lot of people haven't heard of or bands that like, man, you know, you wish they would have kept going. Um, but with that being said, David and David Boomtown's Conquered. 
and I'm announcing the next um, discography you're going to be running to. And it's not like a super long one. Like, it's not 18. It ain't 19 like Sabbath. But it's I think it's like maybe 12. And we're talking about a guy who's on a poster right back there. And he just released the new single um, late last year. Or, yeah, it was late last year in a music video for it early uh, this year. Of course, we're talking about Steve freaking Vi. You know, he's been in so many awesome bands. He's like my favorite guitar player of all time. I've seen him live. And he's, he has a very, very colorful and different sounding discography. So if you guys are into the kind of, you know, guitar players and stuff, I know some of you guys maybe not necessarily into that and kind of the whole instrumental stuff. Um, I absolutely love it. I've heard so many albums that are just straight up instrumentals. And I mean, hell, some of them are my favorite albums of all time here in instrumental stuff. Uh, but I know that's not for everybody. But, you know, if you haven't heard any of um, Steve Vai's discography, you know, I encourage you to maybe, you know, tag along and go with it, uh, go through it with me as we review it here until we get up to that ranking because it's a very, very fun. And not, not all of his stuff is instrumental. In fact, he has... Um, he does vocals on a lot of his albums. Uh, there, I mean, there's even one album that has, like, all... I think there's only, like, one or two instrumental tracks on it, and it's filled with vocals and stuff like that. But, yeah, guys, I'm super hyped to be de delving into my favorite guitar player of all time, Steve freaking Vi's discography. So next time, what that means is we'll be looking at his very first solo album, Flexible, that came out in 1984. So stay tuned for that. Um... You know, I, I think, yeah, I will be covering the EPs for him because they're, they're, they stand out enough and are significant enough and aren't like, they're all original tracks on there. So the EPs like Flexible Leftovers will be covered during this review series and Alien Love Secrets. That stuff is totally going to be covered on here. So that, and that will be factored into the rankings. Just like how, um, I'm trying to think of another band if we did the EPs. I can't remember um, off the top of my head a band that we did EPs for. Or Tool. Tool. We did, whenever I did Tool, I counted Opiate in the ranking. And just because, you know, it stood its ground enough to be factored in there. And it was all original material. So that, if you guys were wondering kind of why maybe like in the Black Sabbath ranking, why the end didn't make it or whatever. Because it's mostly live stuff that EP is um, with just some, you know, a couple of bonus tracks. But these Steve Vai ones will be included Tune in next time, next time, guys. Let me know what you think about this album right here and about the upcoming ranking um, or album review series of Steve Vai. Thanks, guys.